All right, hey, good morning, everyone. We're, we're glad you're here. Um, if you're joining us online this morning, thanks for clicking the link. Uh, we're glad you could do that. Say hi to someone in the room. We'll have a chance to greet one another here in just a few minutes. Um, but I wanna remind you, if you haven't already, be sure to sign in the attendance pads. So it's, it's just a way that the front office knows that you were here this morning. Uh, you don't get any special credit, but it just it helps us to remember who was here. So, um, <laughs> hey, earlier, earlier this week, uh, I had a chance to watch one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's not everyone's favorite movie, but um, one of my favorite movies is The Princess Bride. Do any of you guys know this movie, The Princess Bride? Okay, so a few of you. Um, Brian's going to play one of my favorite scenes from that movie. Together today. <laughs> okay, so you probably don't understand it. Go home, watch the movie. It's it's actually really funny. Um, marriage is not what brings us here together today. Um, it's actually it's actually something else. It's a confession, and the confession goes like this: God is love, all, all the, the time. time, and all the time. Yeah, that's our confession. That's that's what brings us together, and that's what infuses uh, uh, the energy of our of our worship service. Um, 
as we are reminded of that, um, we remember that Christ, in some way, is here in our midst. And so, um, as we do that, would you read with me the, the words that are on the screen and in your bulletin? Um, may the Christ in us see the Christ among us. And the next line, may the Christ in me see the Christ in you. Joanne is going to play our prelude for us now, and then we'll carry on. Thanks, Joanne. Um, so part of what we, d we do here at St. Luke is we, we're glad you can join us for worship. Um, you may not know this, but there's a lot more that happens here throughout the week and every month uh, than just worship, though. So we, we, every week we try to take a few minutes just to let you know of some of what's going on. So um, I know Marshall's got a few announcements. So let me tell you about a few things that are happening this coming month in, in August. Um, reminder that uh, August 9th is Neighborhood Party. Um, it's that one time of the year where we invite our, our whole community out and we have inflatables and lots of food and lots of fun here at St. Luke. So uh, you're invited to that. You're invited to come and participate and, and enjoy that party. We also need people that are willing to come and serve and help out. So there's opportunities to do that. Um, August 25th, there's a Nebraska United Methodist Church Foundation um, is supportive of all United Methodists here in Nebraska, but um, they're having a special event here on November, uh, November, uh, August 25th, it's a Friday, and um, you're going to get more information about this and details in the coming weeks, but just know that there's a special event happening on that Friday, and uh, you'll hear more about that. On the 26th, the next day, there is uh, what we're calling an inclusivity event. Um, I like to think of it just as basic humanity 101. Um, it's really about learning respect and empathy and good communication skills um, those people skills that we all need to be successful in life. And the Great Plains Conference of the United Methodist Church is hosting that event, and it'll be here at, at St. Luke. So hopefully you can join, join us for one of, those, uh, one of those opportunities this coming month. Um, the QR code in your bulletin or the weekly email has more details about that. Marshall. Um, on the 20th, um, let me make sure... Yeah, Sunday the 20th, is the teen, the teen center's having an open house. They're inviting us to come. Barb, I'm doing your announcement. 
Sorry, I, I had to do it at the first at the first service because you weren't here. So help me out, make sure keep me honest. So it's the twentieth. Um, it's going to happen for, starting about nine thirty in the morning, so that folk who come to the nine o'clock service can go over there after the nine o'clock service, and they'll be there till about noon over at the high school, twelve thirty. People can eat their donuts and no. then go over. Served over at the teen center. Yeah. So if you've had your donuts, we're not going to have donuts over there, but okay. we're going to have other treats. But you can go over there at 9.30 to 12.30. Okay. And um, there is a basket back in the... Um, mission corner. Mission corner that we are providing snacks, like after right. school snacks. Right. Um, right. I brought mac and cheese, I brought crackers and chips right. and that kind of thing. So you can donate there, or we've got a, another uh, poster back here that you can drop coins or cash in. Yeah. Um, and a reminder that you would write a check to the, uh, to the teen center right. rather than United Methodist Church or St. Luke. Right. Um, right. So, but come and join us. They're busy getting ready, and it's kind of neat to see. It kind of has a hole in your heart because we'd really like to have them still here, right. but they're growing, and you can tell that they're in a central location that they're going to pull in lots more kids, and they've got lots more things to do. Yep. With kids that had trouble making their grades as freshmen, they're just going to pull those people, right. those students in. So it's a great opportunity. So they'd like you to see their new their new yeah. home. Yeah. So if you it, can join, you know, just come in and go in for a minute. There's going to be students that are going to help us navigate where to go in the school. So they'll meet us at the front door and right. make sure that we get there. So Yeah, so, so plan on going. If you got something to do right after the 1030 service that day, go early. Go early and then come here. It'll be a good day. Thanks, Barb. Um, this afternoon at 5 o'clock, uh, there'll be a bunch of us are gathering uh, here at the church um, to talk about Lloyd and I went on the civil rights uh, tour trip, however you want to describe it, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, we're going to take time just to tell the stories about what we learned and what we saw. Lloyd's put together a wonderful kind of slideshow, at least it's, it's visual, visually interesting. So um, hopefully you can come. Also, right after this service, if you have time, um, we need to move the square tables. Connie, do you know Connie Keg? Do any of you recall Connie? She and her husband were part of the church uh, more actively uh, in the later Dr. Goff years, early years for Scott Shreve. She, um, she had spent time in the Carolinas with her daughter and had moved back recently. She, that's all to say she just died. Okay, we're having her service on Tuesday. So if we can kind of help prep, it just makes it easier for the staff to get things set up tomorrow in preparation for the service. Um, I think that's all I got. So uh, as we carry on, would you join with me in our opening prayer together? God, whom we call love, you welcome us into this time of worship and remind us that this world, this place, and this moment belong to you. We welcome us as strangers and travelers on a journey we do not always want or understand. You ask that we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and teach those who mourn. Come, ask that we will learn and grow and attempt to serve you and others. We will be given the grace of you and our neighbor in all that we do. We pray that at the end of each day, we can say to those to whom love is a stranger, will have found in each of us generous friends. Amen. All right, we get to, we get to sing now. Um, hymn number 405, seek, seek Ye First. So as you're able, feel free to stand up. And we'll, we will sing. Words should be on the screen or in your bulletin.
Hey, be seated. Um, we, every week we get a chance to, to share the, the things that are happening in our life, both the good things and maybe the not so good, things that we want support with or prayer for. So who has, who has a, a good thing or two that you want to you wanna share and encourage? Thanks, Laura. Yesterday, on behalf of St. Luke, um, <laughs> Joyce, <laughs> Joyce and I served Habitat meal, and that was our eighth meal that we've served this year. Wow. And it's always a joyous time, and uh, we had fried chicken, and they just lapped it up. <laughs> so great. It's, a great. it's a great service. Yeah. We enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all that you guys do with Habitat. <laughs> hey, for sure. My friend. <laughs> Summertime seems to be a good time to get families together for reunions, and we were privileged to enjoy a reunion with, uh, I got to see all my great-grandchildren in northern Iowa, and it was fun, and we were tired. <laughs> <laughs> a good kind of exhaustion, hopefully, yeah. Grandchildren are great. Um, the music department had a very generous donation and we were able to purchase a new practice piano hey. and it is it's gorgeous and I'm very excited and so we're looking forward to the season coming up yeah thanks Good. yes uh, tomorrow's my birthday <laughs> all right I'll, I'll be 90 great fantastic <laughs> happy birthday all right. Any other things? The party doesn't have to stop. All right. Any not so good things or things that we just, people we need to remember? Yeah. Courtney. My friend Cindy, who is much younger than I, learned this week that she'll never walk again due to having um, an infection in her spine. My friend Sue got a call this morning. Um, she's in Omaha, and her boyfriend's in Billings, Montana, and he had a heart attack. And he's going through surgery right now as we speak. So um, he needs, his name is Tom, and he needs prayers. Thanks. And so does she, actually. Yeah. yeah thanks for sharing. Um, get as comfortable as you can. Um, and as you do that, um, earlier this week, I'll, I'll just tell you, I had to be outside for a bit. Yeah, I was mowing the lawn with my son. And as you know, it's, it's pretty hot out there this, this past week. Um, I was fortunate where we were mowing, there was a shaded area. And I've been thinking about that a little bit. So um, as you settle in and as we pray here, um, I'll just, I'll ask you to put the image of shade in your mind. God, as we slow ourselves, center ourselves with you this morning, We think of this weather that we've had this week, and we think of the image of shade. We are reminded that your word paints for us the picture of you as shade for your people. Shade that will bring relief in the hot sun, Shade that cools. Shade that protects from the elements. God, we, we have the pendulum swings between joy and celebration and concern and challenge. 
and yet you remain as a comfort and a relief to us throughout the seasons of our life. We pray that on this day, you would be tangible in a way that we can't be for, for others in need. For people who uh, are in hospital this morning, people who uh, need a touch from you. We sense your relief in the joys of, of family and events that have brought comfort to others. And God, we don't know what we will face in the week ahead. But we do know that you are there as a comfort and a relief for us. And as the, as the leader for the journey that we're on, you remind us of who you are when you say these words. Our Father, the Lord in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In the early service, this is the point where I normally do a children's moment and invite all the kids forward. And this morning, we did a recap video of 
our week at VBS. And we thought you guys might want to see that too. So here it is. me from the start you're the one who knows my heart you are there for me jesus you are showing me the way love and kindness every day you are helping me jesus so i'll follow fantastic week. We had just as many adults as we had kids. Isn't that fun? Um, and we had folks that came and made meals and served meals and worked with the kids, and it was a wonderfully exhausting, fantastic week. Um, one of the projects that the kids were working on, we mentioned last Sunday, I think, was that they had, uh, they were raising they were bringing in food to donate to all people's um, food pantry uh, for folks in need. And this up here is evidence of what they were able to get donated this week from just those few kids we had. We had 15 kids. A third were from our community. Uh, I mean, third were from outside our church community. And two-thirds were from our church community. And um, can you believe this? I am impressed with them. Not only that, um, we had the lofty goal of uh, getting 500 pounds. What you see here is about 300 pounds, and we have at least $250 still in cash to purchase more. Um, so we have asked our congregation to help us match. We didn't think we'd come even close to 500 pounds, but we did. So isn't that amazing what the kids were able to do? And those will get donated this Wednesday. So if you want to still contribute to it, I am collecting until Wednesday morning, and then we'll take it over to the pantry. Thanks for your time. And still give. Yeah, you don't have to bring food in. You can also just make a check and put VBS in the memo, and all of it will go towards the food pantry stuff. 
Sir, what you may not know is I've been sneaking some food up there that folk brought in this morning. So we, we've added to it a bit. We've added to it. Hey, let's just take a moment to stand up, greet each other. Just thank you for singing. That was beautiful. And uh, just say hi. We got time. The sermon ain't that long. So this morning is one of those finally Sundays. We are finally going to get out of the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew. Finally. We've been in the same chapter for the last three weeks. All right. Now, the folk who put the lectionary together, I'm not quite sure why, um, but they really chunked this thing, this whole chapter up. Partly because the last couple of um, parables you've ha we've had, you know, they have, the, they have the parable and then they get the explanation later. Well, Matthew, when he wrote, he didn't, he didn't just put that one right after the other. He, he put other stuff in there. Um, I'm, using, I'm using the imaginary he for Matthew because we, don't, we have no clue who Matthew was. So quite possibly a he could be a she. But the author of Matthew um, just, laid the, just laid this whole chapter out differently. Um, the part I'm going to read to you, I think it's listed as, uh, what, Matthew 31 through 52. That's wrong. I started a new way of looking stuff up, and I got to get out of it because I put a mistake in the bulletin the last two Sundays. It's, it's pieces of that. It's not going to be the whole thing. All right? So, um, well, let me just read it, and then we'll talk about it. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of the shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour 
until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and reburied. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets and threw, the, and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is old, what is new, and what is old. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. All right, so if you had a chance just to set, kind of collect yourself together, and, and, and I ask you this question, what would you say? So just kind of collect up. How many of you think you understand your faith? Uh, uh, I, I, some, I, I, yeah, like this. Others of you, I can see, like, don't. It's the first question of the sermon. Don't answer this question. It's a trick question. Don't ever answer the first question, right? I, I say that because, you know, because I would like to be one of them go, yep, I understand. It's Sunday. I understand on Sunday. Monday's a different story, you know, but I understand my faith. But I wonder, because at the end of this reading, Jesus looks at the disciples and says, do you understand what I'm talking about? And they say, yes, we understand. And I wonder if they didn't answer yes like I answered yes when Mr. Johnson taught me about the Pythagorean theorem. Do you guys know the Pythagorean theorem? That's that whole... Somehow, if you square an A and you square a B and you add them together, it equals the square of a C. My best friend, John, ended up being an electrical engineering professor at Wichita, Wichita State University. I was looking on his paper to find out if he understood the whole A, B, C, and D thing. You know, Because once you went from numbers in math to letters, it was Greek. I just I got lost. I didn't want Mr. Johnson to know I was lost, so I just said, sure, sure, I know, I got it, I got it. And I wonder if the disciples were having that kind of day too. They, they, they wanted to be there, but weren't quite sure. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll ask that question again at the end. On, on Tuesdays, you know, we, we have this conversation amongst anybody in the church who wants to be a part of it. It's just a faith conversation, a little Bible study online at 2 o'clock. And, and we got into this, and we got to talking about this mustard seed that grows into a tree. Now, any of you, when you were growing up, did you see mustard grow? I saw mustard grow, and it was, I found it incredibly interesting because when my grandfather would look out into the alfalfa field and see the mustard growing out there with the alfalfa, the alfalfa, he would say words that he would not repeat around grandma. And it was always nice to know those words. You know, it was curious. Because it, because at least the mustard that I grew up watching, it would get up about this tall. And be bright yellow, and the alfalfa, the stuff we were trying to grow, was down here. You know? And I don't know, maybe, maybe the mustard shrunk. Maybe it shrunk over the last 200 years, or 2,000 years, and went from tree size to just weed size. But that's what I know. And then I've got to thinking, because I've always been confused about how it is that the mustard that Jesus had was big enough for, for birds to come set in its branches. 
And then I notice something. The thing that, that, that I think throws us off, maybe throws us off, or throws me off about this particular parable is I don't get the parable right before it and then get to read this next. Last week, you remember, we had the parable of the, the weeds and the wheat. Remember that story? You know, the, the farmer went, went out and planted all this good seed, and those who worked, worked with the farmer went out and looked later and said, hey, somebody showed up and planted weeds in your wheat. Do you want us to pull it out? And the farmer said, no, because you'll damage the wheat when you're pulling it out. Now, part of what we know about the words that are used to describe those weeds in that wheat is that those two particular plants look a whole lot alike. And they grow up to about the same size. You don't know the difference between the two until they mature. And then you can look at them and you can tell the difference between the two. The problem is they look so much alike. And here we have this story about a farmer being so careful to plant good seed that we miss the twist in this parable. Because what did the farmer in this parable plant? Weeds. Went out in the middle of the field and planted mustard. It's not something, it, it's not something that would have been done. There's no way to make a kosher field and plant mustard right in the middle of all the other stuff. Okay? The difference is, sometimes in the kingdom, what's important is to let things grow together with grace until you find the right moment to do the separating. And in the other, it is to let that which you don't think should be valued, be valued. And that particular thing grows in such a way that it protects it protects and offers shelter to things you don't yet imagine i still want to see a mustard plant that a bird can set in have not yet done that but i can imagine a number of things that i thought at first weren't worth much at all end up being that which gave comfort and shelter and protection to the community around those two go together and then we get to these two, we get, we get to this, um, this parable of the yeast. Now, you all, have you ever, any of you ever been visited that, by that, for me, it's a, it's a plague upon the home kitchen. You know, that Amish bread that keeps growing forever. And it brings so much guilt because you've had it for years and you want to get rid of it, but you can't, right? Somebody gave it to you and it keeps working. It's, that, you know, it's got the yeast that's already there and all you have to do is pull it out and use it over here and then put a little bit more back in it. It'll grow till next week. And then you do the same thing over again, right? You all know this? Five, <laughs> five pounds later. Yep. Especially if you put the sugar and the cinnamon on top of it. Yeah, every time. Every time. Well, I got to thinking about this, this yeast that, that is being used to make bread, and the person who's baking the bread you know, puts in three measures of flour. Now, uh, my mom was a home ec teacher. I knew how to use measuring cups. Okay? What I also learned was that when you couldn't use measuring cups when you baked with Grandma. Grandma didn't have measuring cups. Grandma had a hand. You know, and she put the yeast in there, and then you know, he had three measures. So I got to wondering about this today. How much, how much bread is getting made, you know, in this story? Now, when we go back and look at the words that are used, this is a big loaf of bread. They're using eight and a half pounds of flour. Okay. Any idea how many cups that is? I think it's just a little over 300 cups of flour. And putting in this one measure of yeast. I, I, how, how long would you have to let that loaf rise in order to get something out of it? And isn't that the question? The kingdom of heaven, the community of faith, the realm of God is like somebody who takes eight and a half pounds of fl flour and puts in it a small measure of yeast. And the kingdom is like the yeast 
that makes all of that flour become something different, become the bread. It takes time, but it only takes a little, and it takes the knowledge that that will work. That will make something different. Sometimes I, I get caught thinking that what I have to do is, is somehow, it has to be huge. It has to be, you know, people have to notice it. It can't be just a little thing. It has to be a big thing. But the story tells us it's that little thing that makes the rest of it so different. Perhaps some of you are like me. You're good at little things. The big things, maybe not so much. The other parables we have, well, one is the treasure in the field that the guy finds. He finds it, puts it back, and then sells everything he's got to go buy that treasure. I have always thought that the next parable is just the same thing said over again, right? The next parable is the one about the pearl. The merchant who finds the pearl of great price. And again, goes, sells everything to get the pearl. But if you read the parable again, the parable is not about the pearl. The parable is about the merchant. The parable is about the person. Now, I know what some of you have done in your lives, your professions. Imagine if you would take all that you had and just spend it to buy one of the things that you know how to love. Just one thing. What would happen? What would happen if you, could only, you only had one house from here on out for habitat? Just one. Or you got to sell one cap and gown. That's all you got to sell forever. For, that, that's it, Rod. That's just the one. Or maybe a building, or maybe a student. You, you, you would be defined by that one thing. Jesus asks us to imagine, to imagine that the community of faith is worth getting everything we have and a, getting it, and that then letting it define who we are. Letting it be how the world sees us. I'll confess that there are some some days um, I I, I um, I'll leave here at church on Sundays and I'll go to Costco and before I walk in the door I make sure I take my name tag off. I don't always know when I will not act in my better nature. <laughs> okay? And if that moment happens to me, I would rather not be representing all of you in that moment that I was having a meltdown by the cheese aisle. Okay? And yet, and yet, what would it be like to know the shaping of the love of God in such a way that it would be worth everything I've got. The way you see me, the reputation I have, everything about us to be said, you know, I don't know much else. I don't much know much else, but I know that it, that's a person who believes in the community of faith around them that knows the love of God, is willing to love others when they don't look like they need loving, but we know they do. Jesus is inviting, inviting the disciples into that. Now, we know that there's chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, the disciples, they, they get confused. They don't always get it right. But after hearing the parables, they look at Jesus and go, yeah. Yeah, we get that. We know what that means. Folks, I pray for you that one moment, that one moment, one moment today, this week, whenever, when you know 
that the love of God in your life, the community of faith that surrounds you, is worth all that you have and all that you might become. And that the one who loves you has seen you and said, you know what? That one over there, they're worth all that I have and all that I can become. And that you are loved. Folks, that's the community of faith. Amen. I'm not sure when it was this week, but I decided we're going to redo the bulletin. Just a wee bit. Because we've got this thing that says uh, sermon and then finishing the sermon. It's all in one line. It's, all, it's just got that little hashtag through it. We're going to change that because we're going to have the sermon and then we're going to have the song. And then after the song, we're going to have the finishing the sermon part. So the thing that we did last week, we're going to start, we're going to put it in a bulletin like that. So we're going to sing. Um, just stay seated while we sing. And then, uh, and, and during the time you're singing, you might come up with a question. You might come up with a question, a comment, or somehow that you want to fix the sermon, and we'll go on with that. Okay? I think, the, I think it is 2001. And let's sing together. It'll be on the screen or in the black book. So let's take a minute to finish the sermon. Any, any questions, comments, or others? So, so let me just... Because I think mine's easier. I think comfort is easier than those Ah, things. yeah. So, so... Uh, in case for the, if you didn't hear it, Mark's saying, I should have asked the question differently before. I, I should not have asked the first question, um, do you understand your faith? I said, should have said, are you comfortable with your faith? And that would have been an easier question. Right? Ah, yeah. I agree, but I'm not sure that Jesus really cared whether or not you're comfortable <laughs> with your faith. <laughs> Because I got a faith that I'm really comfortable with, uh, you know. I'm, uh, but in 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 that the tension in our lives, we we want a faith that is that is comforting. That holds us, that gets us through those moments when when stuff is falling apart, and we're facing things we don't want to face. We 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 want to know. We want to know that we are loved and that we will be that God will be present, always present. I can't deny that, and I think that's a part of it. But I think the other part of it that always pulls us out of that comfort is um, being willing to take the risk 
to bring other people in and and go back and look at our lives in ways we may not want to when we have pushed people out but not known or been willing to admit right because sometimes I know that I have sat in somebody's chair and I'm keeping them out of it I was good at that with my brother okay at other times I've known I've sat down in a chair and I did not know but I took I took that place from somebody else there's a difference between sitting down by accident and waiting for him to get there and going like that and pushing him out any other comments or questions benediction will be up on the screen let's say that we'll sing our closing song and then listen to the listen to the postlude now let us go in peace to live a faith that matters to grow in the love of God and to serve wherever we are led amen mm -hmm.